Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson four here for getting and improving memory. <clears throat> here we go. So forgetting. Everyone experiences a failure of memory from time to time. There's that word that you can't remember, the word that you can't spell, uh, that name that you cannot remember. Uh, when information that once centered long-term memory is unable to be retrieved, we call it forgotten. Uh, there's a couple of things that uh, forgetting involves or you know could have occurred to make you forget, along with quite a few others, uh, but we're going to talk about three, and those are the first three key points, decay, interference, and repression. Why do people forget stuff? And then how do we improve that? So decay. Um, decay is essentially when memories fade. Um, this takes time and essentially they become blurry. You know, once you don't use something, then it kind of gets rusty. Items decay uh, almost immediately in your sensory memory and fairly quickly in your short-term memory. Once you put them into your long-term memory, um, they are generally there, you know, for a long time but do they decay or do they change um, there is not a whole lot of um, information right now on whether your long-term memories just kind of like get eaten away uh, this does happen with your sensory memory like every second that passes you lose more of the sensory memory every second that passes you lose your um, uh, short-term memory and it just kind of like uh, flakes away that's how I like to think of it uh, head injuries can cause decay in the long-term memory but this is not necessarily like a natural thing uh, the ones that are lost often are the most recent ones and older memories often uh, remain so which memories decay is a little bit interesting. Uh, the fact that information that you thought you forgot can be recovered through different processes like meditation or brain stimulation, uh, it suggests that these memories are never really gone. They're just unable to be accessed um, at a certain time. Maybe long-term memories don't truly decay once they're there. They just have, they get stacked away in a cupboard and behind a bunch of things that we can never like move around to find. Uh, so there is lots of different theories about how um, decay works in your sensory memory, your short-term memory, and in your long-term memory. Uh, interference is something that can cause you to forget. So interference refers to a memory uh, being blocked or erased. Uh, and this kind of has two kinds. Um, we have proactive interference, essentially when an older memory blocks you from remembering something um, or when a retroactive interference is when a newer memory or a later memory uh, blocks you from remembering something. So um, my example of this is I had a license plate on my car for like 10 years and it went from uh, it went to two different cars and then eventually it got uh, so that the paint was coming off of it and I got a new license plate I swear like three years ago and I cannot remember what my license plate is I can only remember what my old license plate was my old license plate was FNR 236 asking what my license plate is now uh, like if a police officer asked me that it would seem like I stole the car because I cannot remember so that is proactive interference an earlier memory is blocking me from remembering uh, this information. Retroactive interference is when a newer memory is blocking you from uh, remembering information that you learned earlier and sometimes that can be a good thing. Um, the example that I give at the bottom here is imagine moving to a new home or getting a new address, getting a new license plate, all of these things, a new phone number. Uh, they're just hard to remember either the old one or the new one sometimes and I just have this mental block where I cannot remember my new license plate, but it is what it is. Uh, repression, key point three. In some cases, interference seems to erase memories permanently. Uh, essentially, we want to get rid of them. 
Uh, Sigmund Freud pioneered the idea that this blocking of uh, memories is no accident. So if you remember him uh, from the first unit, uh, he's a little bit crazy, but he said that this blocking is no accident. A person may subconsciously block memories of embarrassing or frightening or traumatic experiences, and this is called repression. I know that I have trouble blocking these embarrassing moments. Uh, I revisit them in my head when I least want to. They pop back when I'm trying to go to sleep. Uh, yeah, so if I could repress those, that would be great. Um, this type of forgetting is called repression. Uh, the, mere, the material is still in your brain, it's just inaccessible. And again, I would like to do that with some memories, as I'm sure you would, um, but this just happens uh, by our brain by no accident. Amnesia is key point four, uh, and amnesia is essentially not forgetting but a loss of memory, something that is unwanted, uh, often because large chunks of memory that are missing. Uh, so infant amnesia is the relative lack of memory in early life. Like how many memories do you have from when you were before three? Unlikely to be uh, very many. Um, one of the causes of this is that is Freud again. And he said that when you're a baby uh, or you're below three, so many things happen to you that are like against your will. You cry so much that you have like a lot of traumatic memories. Uh, and that you hide or repress these memories from your early years um, so that you are not affected by this trauma. It's not the fact that your brain wasn't developed enough to remember them. He said that you repress them and hide that emotional trauma. Others believe that infants don't really understand language yet, so their memories are nonverbal. So if your memories are nonverbal, how do you explain your memories uh, in words? Um, it's not like you forgot everything you learned between zero and three years old, but you can't explain them generally because those memories are nonverbal. The memories that we have now we can describe uh, in words because we remember things in words. Language uh, allows us to remember things and kind of dictates um, what, what we can remember, our emotions, um, but infants don't have that yet, so their memories are a little different than ours. Uh, to recap, so scientists have identified three phases of the life of the memory. You can acquire it, store it, and then retrieve it. Um, first of all, information has to be acquired or learned. Your brain then has to process this and place it in storage, whether that be long-term storage or uh, sorry, short-term storage or long-term storage. Uh, but if you want to recall it or retrieve it, that has to be gone, going into long-term memory. So it has to be able to retrieve that memory at a later date. Uh, this uh, forgetting part is when we have trouble doing that for the reasons given in our key points. And we can improve our memory um, by improving the way we organize and categorize information that we learn. And that's what we're gonna talk about for a couple of slides next. So improving memory, we can improve our memory by repeating things or by uh, doing maintenance rehearsal. Um, that will help for a short period of time. But elaborative rehearsal is something that's really important and why we try to build on things that we already know. Elaborate more rehearsal is more efficient and it involves relating new information to something that you're already familiar with, that you already know about. So, um, you know, you can't build a house until you can bang in a nail, essentially. Similarly, you can't remember more things when they're in, you can remember more things when they're indexed into uh, more categories. Um, each association will trigger the memory and make it more likely to retrieve it. So a nail is small, it is hard, it is silver, it is cold, it is shaped like that. What, what, else, it's, what else can I remember about a nail? so that whenever I uh, think about these things, a nail pops up. That is how people um, practice or improve their memory. C connect things, uh, connect items, connect memories, connect, uh, two things that they already know so that they can categorize it, make it easier to retrieve. Uh, to improve your studying, some general tips. You've probably heard these before. Keep rehearsing even after you think you know it, keep doing it. Avoid studying similar material together, global issues and history, 
might not be uh, best studied back to back. It's more effective to study um, a few times rather than just once in a long period. Uh, if you do it a whole bunch of times, um, even if it's short, you'll be more likely to remember it. And use mnemonic devices, uh, essentially, you know, um, if you know the uh, music notes, every good boy, uh, wow, I can't remember them right now. But um, essentially, like, make each uh, word mean something else, and it'll make it easier for you to remember. We have important terms and questions for you to do. Uh, if you have questions about any of this, please let me know. But thanks so much for watching, everyone. I will see you soon.